was asked the other day, someone asked me about the title of the book, which is The Promises of Giants, and they thought that it was about me because I am a physical giant. And I, and I reflected back to them that, no, it's about you. It's about the fact that in organizations, everybody is a giant to somebody. Sometimes it's obvious, it's rank, it's title, it's, it's your position in the hierarchy, but sometimes it's more subtle, it's tenure, the number of years you've been around. Sometimes it's one unique piece of insight you have and hold and nobody else has. Uh, sometimes you went to the right school and sometimes you have the right network. But almost everybody, everybody is a giant to somebody else. And even if it's just that one person who's so grateful because when they first joined, you were the first person to say hello and ask them how they were. You instantly transform into someone who is potentially a role model. So that's what it is to be a giant. It's to, the idea is to stop people from abdicating the responsibility because it's all easier for us to say, we're part of this massive organization. How can I possibly make a difference? But you can, just look around you. There's someone with that look on their face just waiting for you to be their giant. It's like me imagining that I am overweight because I drink a lot of tea. We can institute a regime where I drink progressively less tea mm. with the expectation that I will lose weight then. But I'm not overweight because I drink tea. I'm overweight because I have a pizza once a week and I eat donuts more regularly than I have water. That's why I'm overweight. So if I want to do something about being overweight, it's the donuts and the pizza that have to be changed, not the tea. Mm. But it's easier to change the tea, isn't it? Anytime I see somebody add a word to something, I always wonder why. Why add the modifier? Yeah. What does it add to our understanding? Bias is enough, right? Bias is enough. So why did you add unconscious? What does that add to the picture? Oh, the idea that it's not your fault is what it adds. It's buried deep inside me. So I think if you want to tackle bias and the fact that we are all programmed with a huge set of assumptions around people who are different than us, then you have to have, have people acknowledge those assumptions. Uh, and, and until we acknowledge that, it'll leak out in mm. our behavior. But once we acknowledge it, we can start to think more carefully about, hmm, I was thinking about saying this to Hannah, but I've realized that it was a knee-jerk reaction that came from this yeah. bias inside of me. And instead, I'll not. And that's how simple it is, by the way. Yeah. It's not some complex formula. It's shutting our mouth. That's it. I'm just not going to say it. Mm. And the thing is, everybody has that skill. Put them in front of a senior person. Language is vetted. Perspective is vetted. Even how you drink your tea is vetted. We know how to change our behavior around different types of people. We just don't choose to make the effort around some people. Hmm. And I think we should start challenging that. Yeah, culture is defined by the worst behavior that any person tolerates. Hmm. That's what defines a culture, not whether you eject egregious offenders, not whether people are broadly compliant to the rules, but whether you tolerate small incivilities. Mm. It's the idea that this space that we're in now, as pristine and lovely as it is, it would take relatively small amounts of time if one person came by and dropped one small item mm. and nobody picked it up and another person dropped one small item. Over the course of the day, this place would be filled with detritus. Yeah. It would be an unsanitary mess. That's all it takes for cultures to devolve into that toxicity. I mean, leaders are responsible for outcomes. It doesn't have to be a separate conversation about equity. Yeah. Here's your team meeting and here's my five minutes on inclusion. It's changing the way you operate, examining systems and processes to make sure that inbuilt bias isn't present and, and unintended consequences yeah. aren't occurring, and that criteria exist for good contemporary reasons, yeah. not just because it's always been the that's way we've we done it. That's how we did it before, yeah. And that's all our responsibility in every moment. Um, it's our responsibility to make it so that every person knows on my team, you must speak up and I'm going to create space for that. It's, it's my responsibility as a leader to flex and that's what we should do to enable a, a broad, diverse group of people to operate well around us. It's us. The future world of work demands a different caliber and quality of leader than we mm. had in the past. I think there's a whole group of leaders who have not experienced world wars and, and come to this yes. point and have suddenly found that the world is more disrupted and challenging than they could ever could have imagined. Yeah. A new kind of leader is expected. The old kind of leader was about certainty and invulnerability. Mm. 
and inflexibility. It's about omniscience, knowing everything. And the new kind of leader is not that. They're about emotional literacy, the idea that you can connect with people, understand their human yeah. beings, enable their thriving, as in their performance in a workplace, by treating them differently in order to treat them fairly. Mm. It's about understanding yourself as a exactly. person and the impact you have. If you don't know who you are and what you stand for, you're going to cause harm. Yeah. It's like being a it's like being Godzilla walking through downtown. If you're just unaware of your size and your impact and the fact that you're firing off flames in all kinds of directions, yeah. you need to know who you are and your impact on other people. The infrastructure, the policy, the procedure, really running the lens of how would X group of people experience Y, yes. but also recognizing that most of our decisions are made from a person's perspective. Mm. You know, buildings are built from the perspective of people who are ambulatory and can walk. Yeah. But it, it excludes certain people because of that. And then when we make accommodations, such a terrible way forward, because it means, A, you have to spoil the design, which pisses everybody else off. Right. Why do we have to have this ramp? Because you didn't think about integrating yeah. this when you designed it, and that's why. So it is the thinking, recognizing that there is a prototypical person we are thinking about mm. when we build a policy or a procedure. So we need to broaden that definition of who needs their environment yeah. to work for them. Mm. When it comes to DNI, we talk about better, but we don't talk about getting there. Yeah. I'm 51 years old. When should I enter a building and not be seen as a threat, as a shoplifter or something else? Well, when people with disabilities can imagine going to a bar and being able to go to the loo and not find it filled with um, the cleaning equipment from, the, from that bar. Mm. And on, when gay couples holding hands in non-queer spaces without the fear of retribution. And on and on. It's not a journey. It's people's lives that yeah. are expiring while others procrastinate. And on this smaller scale, because I know you're a huge organization and there's lots of huge ones, but it's still a small and controllable scale. Yeah. It's a little ecosystem that you can, you really can think mm. about what it should look like in five or 10 years. And indeed most organizations have done exactly that. Yeah. But they just haven't considered this cultural element in the way that they should so strategically. During the pandemic, we saw our colleagues as human beings. Yeah. And so now the leaders of the future, we can't go back. No person once seen as a person will go back to being a widget of productivity. Yeah. So if you as a leader are not capable, capable, if you as a leader are not willing to learn the skills, to treat people who are going to differ from you to a larger or smaller extent with respect and dignity, then you're a dinosaur and the meteor's coming. It is not the strongest of a species that survives, nor the smartest. Hmm. It is the most adaptable that survives. That is true of individuals, it's true of species, it's true of businesses. <laughs>